All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco. And with me today, I have Paul Sandbar, uh, an ingenuity and executive coach and visual thinking facilitator. Paul Sandbar's life and career has been dedicated to the field of self-development and to affecting positive change through purposeful play, storytelling, and powerful conversations. Initially as a psychotherapist and now as an accredited coach and certified coaching supervisor, Paul Sambar, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Michael. Pleasure to be here. Awesome, man. Um, so we, I like to start these out, uh, just kind of having you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what got you into coaching? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you might have heard this before, but uh, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. But a lot, I hear it so often from coaches that they say, you know what, I, I uh, once I, I got into the coaching profession, I, I realized that I was always a coach. And, and that really, that really rings true for me, too. Um, I, I jokingly like to say it's, it's basically the only thing I can do. Um, you know, I can do a few other things, make an egg every once in a while, but um, really having having deep conversations with people and getting to know them and understanding what it is that they want and, and supporting them to get there really does light me up. And it's something that I've been doing my whole life. Now I'm just happy to be able to make a living doing it. Um, you might have seen me do it on a basketball court 20, 30 years ago, probably in a much different way, but uh, hope you don't mind the sports uh, reference. You know, I was a, I was a, I was a point guard, right? I, I gave up good shots to give great shots. And, uh, and I, I was always the guy on the court trying to be the extension of the coach on mm -hmm. the sidelines to, to help keep the team, the culture of the team, help make the team better. And oftentimes that was by making small sacrifices on my own for the mm -hmm. betterment of, of the team and group. And, and you know what, I mean, to me, that's what a coach does. It's, it's not about me. Um, it's about we, and, and, and when it comes to the, we, and my type of work, it's about serving my clients. And so, um, so yeah, it, it's just, it's what I do. Like you said, uh, I was, before moving into coaching, I was a, I was a psychotherapist. Before that, I actually cut my teeth in the startup world and business. I, I like to refer to my journey to get here as a fortunate series of overcorrections. And uh, that's mainly because for a long while, it just felt like a lot of failures. And mm -hmm. uh, I reframed how I looked at it and things started to change uh, in the way I was looking uh, to the future. And, and you know, reframing um, wins and of course losses is what we do as coaches, right? I love it. I love it. And as um, as a former captain of the hockey team, <laughs> growing up, right. bring on the sports analogies. <laughs> no problem. We like drop that. and dive. Sounds good. I love good. the idea of being the extension of 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 the coach, right? And you're not, um, you know, as as a coach, you know, I think you're not really there to tell people how to do things, but to help them kind of figure it out on their own, figure out what works for them and, and things like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that people are, people are whole already, right? It, it, it is, they come to us to expand on the wholeness. You know, we are, we're not, you know, we're not doctors, right? They don't come in sick you know, they don't come in broken. Of course, there are problems and challenges, but mm -hmm. if we come in looking for problems and challenges, that's what we will find. And, and oftentimes we will find the problems and challenges of them that are our own to fix, right? So, so that's, <laughs> that's for me and my coach to do. <laughs> I come in looking at them as whole already and asking them what, what do they want to expand upon? What do they see in themselves that, that needs working on? And then that's where we start. In fact, actually, I like to start from a strengths-based approach, right? Start with what's already working because mm -hmm. usually getting priming them 
into that mindset allows them to think about possibilities for using using the the one strength to to bolster potentially the quote unquote weakness right yeah. that's great that's uh i think that's classic peter drucker right is he's, he's, sure. uh, he's said back in the day it's double down on your strengths um right. focus on your strengths do what you're really good at focus on that and 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 build from there right um, so I like that a lot. Tell us a little bit about your, your clients. Who is, who is your ideal client? Who do you work with? You know, um, I, I do refer to myself, uh, as you said, uh, as an executive coach, I, I do, um, work, uh, for corporate clients working, uh, with and large organizations, lots of tech, uh, tech clients, but also I really love working with smaller startups or, or nonprofits. Generally, um, my, my clients in terms of the companies that I work for run, run the gamut, but mm -hmm. in terms of the type of people I work with, oftentimes they're, they're, they're high potentials, they're, they're new to, to managing, or they have recently moved from manager to, to director or director to, to VP. They're, they're transitioning up. And, and mm -hmm. as we know, um, you know, all change, all mm -hmm. growth actually comes, uh, also, uh, loss also comes inside. So what are you, what are they growing into? And what do they need to leave behind? You know, we know as we've worked our way up from from on the front lines, getting our hands dirty, that's it's it's hard work, but also we see the work, you know, like that's mm -hmm. painting is not fun, right? But painting a wall, we see the color change right before our eyes, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing the work right in front of me. As we move up in the in in the in the world uh, uh, of work that direct change doesn't always happen. It's really mm -hmm. more about how do we lead? How do we manage down? How do we build culture? How do we change people? And so oftentimes the work I do is around that. That being said, you know what? Today I just signed a, a private client. I don't have a lot of private clients that I take on uh, outside of the contracts that I do, um, but they're, they're the same people. You know, the, the joke that often is said, you know, oh, you're, you're an executive coach. Is that, you know, is that life like a life coach? I say, yeah, you know what, you know what I talk about with the executives that I work with? Life. That's, we're humans talking to humans, right? Uh, so. There's a running joke on this podcast that <laughs> yeah. every executive coach's dirty little secret is that they're just a life coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, it's, we're all like, I mean, that's, it, the, the the moniker life coach you know as it as it grows and grows it you know it's it it gets uh, you know some some people have some different thoughts about it but the truth is, is that yeah that's that's what we're doing we're talk i mean we're talking to people about their lives and honestly the executives especially the higher and higher you get you have less and less people mm -hmm. to talk to 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 have a trust bonded relationship with that that you can actually share and be vulnerable mm -hmm. with because oftentimes the higher up you get you know it's windier at the top of the mountain than it is at the bottom right mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 being able to have those type of uh as i like to say productive pauses uh which is a, a term that I, I stole from a friend actually he, he if he ever hears this Sorry, Adam. Um, but uh, um, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Adam. Thank you. You're the best. Um, you Reframe that. <laughs> he knows. I've told him. I I couldn't not. Um, no, but it, it is. It really is about having an opportunity to have those productive pauses, because you know, leaders, busy people, we're all busy. Uh, taking that time, really forcing ourselves to stop and reflect. Mm -hmm. is harder and harder. And that's why um, the work we do is more and more important. Nice. How do you feel about work-life balance? Uh, never, what are those words? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna be super cliche. Um, I, I absolutely love what I do. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't feel like work especially a lot of the, the visual thinking and coaching I do around that 
that mm -hmm. I'd love to chat more about in a moment. So there is a, a definite need to have a delineation between what is what is work for work and mm -hmm. what is and what are you doing that lights you up that could look a lot like work, but it really is play. So I'm a big believer in, in creating boundaries around those two. As a solopreneur myself, it is a huge struggle. I think in the last two years, the whole world realized how hard it is for solopreneurs, for individual sole proprietors like us to, to work from home and to separate our work from our home, right? Mm -hmm. And that's so much of the work that I've been doing with clients over the last few years. The, the last thing I want to say about that is, is I actually don't like to use the term balance. Mm -hmm. The term for me is actually balancing. There mm -hmm. is no such thing as balance. The idea is that it's a, it's a state of balancing, that we're always having to work on the idea of balancing. And yeah. so that's just keeping it up in my consciousness, right? You see the tightrope. Uh, uh, trapeze artists, they are balancing. They're not balanced. Once it's a state they of stop being. balancing, they fall over. Right. Yeah, right. it's a state of being. It's not. It's not a destination. You don't get to right, balance. Right. You're always. In it the really is important to to really have some strong internal boundaries. External boundaries are are important, but to really own what it means for you to have that that balancing in your life. And uh, make sure you incorporate, um, because why why are we here on this planet? We're mm -hmm. here to here to live, not not to work. Yeah, that's kind of the way that I've looked at it too. I think is you know, work is work, but it's just it's more than that. It's part of life. It's all life. So the the, the idea of a work life balance, it's really just life balancing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's all it's all it's the only one you get. <laughs> it is, and, and it is really tough. Yeah. Right. You know, which is why it's so important to be thinking about it and to, you know, to keep it in, in your in your consciousness to, to ask yourself, you know, what you know, what am I doing this for? What, what is the purpose that I'm that I'm that I'm choosing to, to stay late or to do this extra work? You know, what does it give me? Well, it gives me more money. Well, then what does the money then give you? Hopefully freedom, freedom to do what? Have a life, right? So that's, hopefully. Yeah, you're, so yeah, in, in essence, sometimes you're just, you're exchanging hours for the money that buys the freedom to have more hours. So you're just exchanging hours for hours or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's time is is finite, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't get it back. Um, you just have to make the most of it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I want to circle back to something you said. You were talking earlier about visual thinking. Tell us, tell us about that. That's a big part of what you do. Yeah, it it really lights me up. It really is is um, what where I like to. Play. And and I'll and I'll come to it in a moment. You know, bring coming tangentially to it. Um, you know, what I used to love to do when I was a little kid was play with Lego. Mm -hmm. That was when I was uh, as Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi, which is the the author and founder of of flow states and and of positive psychologies. He says, you know, when you're in the zone. Back to the the sports reference for any of those. Uh, basketball fans, they might picture that that image of Michael Jordan when he shrugs his shoulders after he's hit like the ninth straight, you know, <laughs> long distance shot when he, he even he even he didn't know what he was doing. It just was working. Right. Yeah, I see it. in you that type of flow state is something that we all have been to and we all have embodied and all of us want to find it again in some way, shape or form. Well, for me, when I was nine, Lego building was was a flow state, and and I've been trying to, I've been trying for years to figure out the, the what that the feeling of what that meant for me as a professional, mm -hmm. and and for me, you know, it, I I actually started in my undergrad 
as as an architect. I <laughs> wanted to build. I loved it. I you know just let me build in real life. Let me go to school for it. I flamed out really quickly because I realized that that it wasn't quite what I was looking for. And so ever since then, it's been a search of of what is that that flow for me and and. I, I overcorrected into business from architecture and then overcorrected into psychology, became a therapist and then, and then moved back to find a space between business and psychology and in coaching. And, and that fit really, really well. But there was still that, that little piece of me, that little Lego brick, if you will, that was missing from the process. And, and that was the aspect of bringing play and hands-on visual thinking into my work. And so bringing back to the question you asked, so much of of what we help people with is to bring a bit of order from the complexity of their lives, right? Mm -hmm. We know that we can only hold on to a certain number of nodes of information. And a lot of times as coaches, what we do is we help our clients remove some of the clutter so they can really hold, maybe even in their hands, what is really the information that is truly important and maybe make a decision or get clarity on the one thing that is really purposeful to them. Mm -hmm. And so why not actually take that metaphor and bring it to life? And so years ago, I came across something that is called Lego serious play, and it literally is what it's called. It's using Lego bricks to make meaning by building our thoughts by, by actually taking an idea. And it's not about building a perfect looking car, right? We can follow instructions and do that. It's mm-hmm. really more about just free form, letting our hands can uh, be the, our brains and building a thought and then holding it in our hand. Mm-hmm. And when we're able to externalize that idea or that thought and give it weight, we can look at it from a different perspective we can set it on the ground and maybe pick up another thought and we could give a bit more order to all of the thoughts and emotions that are flowing or in in and around our body and heart mind and soul and so i i use this tool with my groups and teams but also with my individual clients to actually uh, enable them to do some hands-on visual thinking mm-hmm to decide and understand the meaning that they're giving because well we think in pictures right but we talk in words well sometimes people may have the the image or the idea before the words Mm -hmm. so building it allows them to construct what it means to them and then and then like i said they can hold that thought in their hand and then the pandemic hit nobody wanted to play with my toys (laughs) and so I said well how do I how do I use this in a digital way and so then I I started using tools like mural digital whiteboards where I now meet with clients on a digital whiteboard where we will then do the same thing similar to building with Legos but we'll build with pictures or 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 sticky notes and then Mm -hmm. and so that at some point in the session now I can literally see what they're thinking. And so my questions get better because we're, we're looking at the same ideas and we're like the same thing. We're able to put one thought to the side, pick up another thought and focus our gaze on what is truly important. So to, it allows us to, to work a bit, uh, you know, I'm biased, but a bit better in a complex world to reduce a little bit of the complexity and so it maybe it's just a bit complicated so that we can find an answer to what may have been an amorphous idea or, or emotion free, free floating in our bodies. So yeah, that's, <laughs> as you can see, it lights me up. It's what I love. That's great. Um, that all sounds really cool. It also sounds, it also sounds abstract. So it's, I'm trying sure. to, I'm trying to picture in my head Right. Um, what it looks like, what it feels like having a business idea sure, and translating that into Legos. Yeah. 
And I have no idea what that looks like. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the process and like, what is that? What, how does that play out? Yeah. I, I realize we are, we're, we're in audio format and, and you can say, Paul, this isn't going to work. Um, but, but I'd like to just try something out real quick, if, if possible. Is that this, cool? This is also going to be on YouTube. So if, oh, if, fantastic. if you're listening okay. to this podcast, if you're listening to it, um, it sounds like this next part is going to be visual. So go check out the video on YouTube. Well, well, it, it, this, it, you're going to explain visually as well. What I, what I would love for you to do is just to look around your room sure. and, and, and if there's, and just grab an item just that explains just that has meaning for you just around what you were what you were thinking about this morning just anything just grab an item and 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 okay so I so keep you yeah you just picked up you just picked up, can you just explain just explain what it is for me yep. so i keep i keep this on my desk as as a reminder it's a little uh i don't know it's a little it's a toy uh, yeah of Wayne Gretzky. I've heard of him. <laughs> big, big, a big, with a big giant head. Um, and it just reminds me, honestly, I use it to remind me that I am also great because Wayne Gretzky was known as the great one. And sure. so I keep, I keep this sitting right next to my desk to remind me that I'm capable of great things. So there you go. Thank you. So that, that toy, that, that, that Wayne Gretzky uh, item does that, does that, does it, when you bought it, does it say all the things that you just said? I mean, it says Wayne Gretzky, you know, great one, whatever. But mm -hmm. the thing that you said after that, that it reminds me of X, Y, and Z. Did it say that on the box? No, those, yeah, those are all personal associations that I've internalized. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, that is a, a, in its simplest form, what we do, we are meaning making machines. Uh -huh. using a term constructivism we are constantly constructing our world around us visually first and then applying verbal and and auditory meaning to it it's called dual coding theory mm -hmm. and so so now that object has meaning for you and there are literally when you look at it it's a it, it's that is my anchor to remind me to be great right yeah that came whole okay <laughs> when 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 we give somebody you know a, a little bag of lego mm -hmm. and say just if you you know what's on your mind or mm -hmm. tell me you know use it take three four minutes build something that 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 answers the prompt where do you come from i and i and I, this is one of the first prompts that I'll use in a group, I'll say, feel free to be literal, be figurative, be metaphorical. Anything you build is the right one because it's what you built. Mm -hmm. People will just start putting bricks together. After a few minutes, there's some, you know, whatever, 20, 30 bricks that are, that has, that is their Wayne Gretzky big head, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then they're literally holding it in their hand. And I'll say, okay, now, now, tell me what what did you create? And suddenly, what happens is is they they are now holding the thought in their hand. This allows them to point to different things. Well, I put this blue brick here because you know I, I, I you know blue always meant a freedom for me. Something like that. People are are making meaning of it. But now, what happens is is that those the meaning is anchored into that tangible object yeah so no no longer is it free floating or an idea now it is a physical object that we can that we can look at we can pass to another person mm -hmm. people can ask us questions about it and so now now this is simple when it's all positive right but sometimes <laughs> we're not always creating something that is that is totally positive maybe it's a challenge for us the other benefit of doing this is that when we externalize, and this is takes from some uh, from some narrative therapy, when we externalize an object, uh -huh. and we actually take the emotion and put it into the object, we're now not as associated into the feelings as much. Uh -huh. And so it's actually easier to talk about because we can talk about 
those the it feelings of 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 just being discouraged when I got passed over for mm -hmm. that job opportunity, yeah. and so now we're able to expand upon it, and also when people ask questions and and I do this in in groups and teams, you know I say don't if you're going to ask a question ask the build not the person, uh -huh. and so they say oh you know I what what was it about that you know can you explain more and and so now people don't get at, because they're not as associated into all the feelings around it. They're better able to, they're better able to think critically and explain it. And also the cool thing is that now this is an anchor that goes with them. Yeah. Right? It sits for so many of my clients, it sits on their desk sure. <laughs> for months. Yeah. And like quite literally, I'll tell the people in the group, I'll say, go around in a month or so and ask, say, hey, Remind me about your build and people are better able to explain it because the thoughts didn't float away, uh -huh. right? They stayed there in the build. And so that's what we do with coaching. It's great to have a powerful conversation with somebody, but if they don't then anchor it into their real world and take action on it, then it's just a conversation, right? So now they leave with, they build some takeaways and it's on their desk and that's a that's a better nudge that's a better reminder than an email i could ever send i love that i love that you're you're taking you're taking thoughts and feelings and emotions externalizing it into this physical material object you've you've created a safe place for the ego to talk about those things because it's externalized now you're not you know michael's not talking about Michael, it's talking about something else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's that's that's great. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the the one last thing on this is it is especially in groups and teams. You know, it, many of us have all been in a meeting. Let's huh. say there's eight people. There's two people that are awesome verbal dialogue artists. They can say everything, control the room, manage all the answers, do it all. And there's two people that sit back and never get a word in edgewise. Mm -hmm. And then maybe four people on average that maybe do a little of both. Sure. When, when you're in a meeting and everybody has to build before they talk, mm -hmm. it flattens the playing field. Everybody potentially feels a little bit uncomfortable because you're asking them to play with a toy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now there is a sense of psychological safety, not perfect. There is no perfect safety in the world, but now at least because everybody's having to build and be a little bit uncomfortable and everybody has an artifact, a tangible you know, representation of their idea, everybody gets to share and everybody gets to, to, to put into the room what is going on for them, which doesn't happen a lot in in team and groups i love it so, yeah that's great i love it <laughs> and and then the cool thing is is it's toys right mm -hmm. and that's the thing that's it kind of you're like we're just playing and that's what i love you know what i try to even without using lego or visual thinking tools with the digital whiteboard yeah coaching so much is about playing with possibilities people yeah. come in done i've always done it this way i'm going to keep doing it that way and it's our job to have them step back and say well how how else might we do it yeah. and and feeling safe to play and experiment is such an important facet of our of of what we do as coaches and so quite honestly it's it's actually an, it's a hack for me it's like bring in some lego and we're already there I mean, yeah, perfect, you're, but. the Legos are toys. They're going to have associations with their childhood, right? So they're, they're naturally going to go in, you know, you've created a safe space before even them creating an artifact, right? Because they're right. just going back and, you know, regressing a little bit back in the childhood. I am not a psychotherapist. <laughs> I'm just kind of following a logical like sequence of events in my head. of what Right. That and that's, and, and a lot of people go, oh, you're going to analyze what we're doing. No. Right. No. That, and that's the distinction. You know, I, I used to do that work. Right. Uh, and 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 there, there's a field of therapy called art therapy. Right. Sure, sure, and sure, sure. You have to go through training and all this sort of stuff. What those people do is they'll say and, you know, they'll say, draw a picture of your family 
and then they will analyze it. Well, you put your dog uh, three, three inches closer than your dad. That means this, that is not anything that I'm doing. Uh -huh. I'm, in, in the coaching way of doing it, you own all of the meaning. If mm -hmm. you build something entirely in red and you say, it's because I feel real blue today, I don't go, wait, but that, I go, okay. <laughs> what what does blue have to do with what does red have to do with feeling blue and they yeah. may say oh well you know blah i mean it's entirely their meaning making process sure. i am the facilitator and you know the word facilitator is to make easier right sure i'm the facilitator of their of their thoughts and ideas and lego yeah. happens to be the tool um for using that yeah, and pre presumably you're using your extensive knowledge of psychotherapy to come up with tools like this, right, to help sure. the facilitation. Right, right. But but in no way am I analyzing. I mean, well, as humans, we can't stop ourselves from analyzing and cu being curious about why, right? Sure. I mean, that's just like like that's no coach do. is ever like, I am. I have never made an assumption before of course not we're all <laughs> that's what we do we are we we are predictive machines right uh -huh. that's how our brains work uh-huh good coaches know to to take that presumption set it to the side because we know that's going to that's going to shade our view of the client and then same thing with this yeah i do of course i use all of my experiences yeah we all do but yeah. but don't throw know, the baby I, out with the bathwater yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, I mean, I, you know, honestly, somebody I spoke with earlier today I said, you know, of course, I'd love to work with you I used to be a therapist. And I say, you know what, great. We are not there. Our work, distinction, our work will be therapeutic to you. It's separate. But it will not be therapy. And there's yeah. a huge distinction between the two. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. What does a typical engagement look like? um with your clients do you do uh, like a, a month to month thing do you do a short three week program that kind of thing or you know i i generally um like to work in in six month uh packages okay. um usually a, a good cadence because i know our, our brain really likes you know likes to know and it likes to build cadences and that's how habits are formed Mm -hmm. So, you know, generally the, the bulk of what I request of my clients is, is a six month commitment mm -hmm. and then, you know, two sessions a month. Do I have a lot of tools in my tool belt? Yeah. I got a bunch of Legos in the closet. Right. But if that isn't what is being, if they're not bringing that need, then we were, you know, I, it, you know, it's a saying, but we really do meet our clients where they're at. So you know, people ask me, well, how, how is it going to work? And I'll say, listen, I have, I have some structure. We're going to definitely in the first month, get really clear on what you want in the very long term and what that might look like six months from now so mm -hmm. that we have an idea. But then after that, it happens organically. You know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, if I were to be like, well, week three, we're going to do this. And then that's, I'm taking them to where I want to go. So mm -hmm. But generally, um, you know, the type of deeper change that I, that people come to me to work on, it takes a bit and it takes a bit of a commitment. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to, to start with somebody for three months because you know what, I'm meeting them where they're at. Maybe it's a financial decision as well, mm -hmm. but I know that, that the type of change that, that, that they may be looking for may take longer than that. And I just, you know, uh, trust the process. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I, but I also love to, you know, to do things, you know, in the interstition and in, in the, in the, between the sessions, not a lot of contact unless they ask for it, but I, I love to use, like I said, the mural digital whiteboards to mm -hmm. actually create our, their learning journey. So it's on a map. And I, and I know now I'm, 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 talking about visual things which is and we're not even able to do that for those of you that are looking on but <laughs> if you can imagine creating starting with a client with a, a relatively blank infographic 
why do so many of us love infographics? Because it combines pictures with words. That's mm -hmm. back to the dual coding theory that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then over the course of the engagement, more pictures, more words, more of their data, their behavioral or, or emotional or, or, or life journey data is added to the mural. And then over time, maybe that six months, that, that mural is now an infographic of their journey that we can mm -hmm. get really close to, you know, to do the, the, the immediate work, but also step back to look at the bigger picture, which is also, you know, what we do as coaches, right? We get on the ground floor with you. And we also ask you to go up 30,000 feet with us to look at the bigger picture. And mm -hmm. I can literally replicate that on the mural, which is why I love using that tool. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. What, um, do you have like templates that you work with on there that you, that you pull up and run through exercises yeah. with or? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, um, yeah, so many of the, the, the exercises that maybe some of us have done wheels and, and, mm -hmm. you know, I love, I love the visual aspects. So, you know, um, Devon's six thinking hats, which is a, mm -hmm. a, a lovely tool to, to put on one, you know, put on a critical thinking hat, put on a, put on a creative hat. You know, I, I've, I've made, I've replicated those, those activities and mm -hmm. then I have them in the content library of the mural. Yeah. And then I'll just bring it into the session. Right. And so, so yeah, that's some of them I've created on my own. Some of them I pull in from other sources, you know, I, I to go back to the top, I, we didn't, we're not trying to recreate the wheel that, that we spoke about right before we hit record on the button. But, uh -huh. um, but I, but I do know that I love, which speaks to the, the ingenuity uh, part of what I call my, why I call myself an ingenuity and executive coach and, and put the ingenuity first. It really is about being innovative and trying out new things. If I'm going to ask my clients to experiment and, and be a bit uncomfortable, I'm going to do the same. And, you know, I have people to beta test them with. So, nice. so fortunately, uh, you know, I don't bring it in for the first time, but um, oh yeah, I, I, I definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the shoulders of the of the thinking coaching giants that came before me and 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 hopefully someday you know somebody will ask me for some of my own tools and and I can share them with with them to help them support their clients. Yeah, that's great. Um so we I want to kind of come bring this around full circle. We 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 talked about a little bit about your your clients and who you work with and we talked about your methods. So how for example, how would you use these methods to help someone who is transitioning into a new position? Are you familiar with the Peter principle? Have you heard of that? Tell me more. So um, the Peter I... principle is a, is a business management concept where people are, are promoted up mm. to their level of incompetence. <laughs> Right. Because because once you get to a point where you're not doing that well, they're not going to promote you. Is that sure. the kind of stuff that you that you help people out with? Like, I'm I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I've been talking all about all of these visual thinking things and all of these tools and, and all of these, you know, like doohickeys and shiny objects and stuff. But really, for me, what it comes down to is is people's metacognition and helping them think about their thing. And, and, and the idea of, of this Peter principle, the idea of that person's ability to reach up to that level is only held at that level because that is what they believe. That sure. is where they believe that they're capable of reaching. Yep. And so really, you know, the real work that I do is not, with the with the lego it's about people's thinking and about mm -hmm. their beliefs about mm -hmm. who they are and who they are becoming better yet who they believe they deserve to become uh -huh. and so much of it it revolves around the stories they tell themselves the stories that they were indoctrinated into from their families you know we don't go back and you know like i said this isn't therapy we don't go back and try to heal those wounds but, sure, we just, sure. I just, but if somebody says something and it sounds like 
it sounds like uh, they may have said the same thing before or somebody said it to them 75 times in their life. I'll go, <laughs> where did you learn that, right? Uh -huh. And oftentimes it's just a belief and it is a way of seeing the world. It's a lens, right? A narrative. And so yeah. It's a, yeah, and exactly. And so, yes, helping people break through the, the help people break through the narratives that are holding them back yeah. and also helping them strengthen the the narratives that are that help them get to that that point that peter point right <laughs> because it, it is using you know the strength based approach but also knowing that knowing that you know every strength has a weakness and every weakness has a strength right you mm -hmm. know I love, you know, I love using the, the, you know, the, the body as a metaphor and our muscles and, and all these things and our core, you know, to talk about values, but also like people, that person got up to that point because they were using a muscle that was working, that was really strong, mm -hmm. but it also, when we have one really strong muscle, the other muscles around it sometimes atrophy a little bit because they don't need to be used. And mm -hmm. so it's about saying, okay, if we can pause using that muscle, how do we work the muscles around it to help you get to that next point? And, and a lot of that work is around believing it, <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I, I agree with that completely. Yeah. The, the, it's just oftentimes you're, you're the only one getting in your own way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. For sure. That's awesome. Well, Paul, um, do you you have uh, an offer for our listeners and our and our viewers? You know, I, I I'm I'm so excited uh, about the work that I'm doing with with Lego series play and coaching, and also the the visual thinking. I I realize that not everybody has Lego, right? But pretty much everybody listening here, I presume. Uh, has a computer and and likes to look at their computer well maybe not likes to look at their computer but looks at it an awful lot and so you know i've been uh, i've been you know just playing over the last few years and i've put together a, a small program to help other coaches lean into the visual thinking and using coaching with visual thinking and visual tools specifically the one that i mentioned mural but there's a bunch of other ones and i don't I'm agnostic when it comes to telling people what they need to use, but I, I know I, I like to use uh, mural. And so, yeah, I would, if anybody wants to, to learn about how to engage with visual thinking with their coaching clients, um, I would love to, you know, to have them come and, and take a, take a brief training with me. And, and when you do, you get to, you get some of my uh, templates that I've created, which people seem to like, and, and then, and then you get to go play with, with, with your clients and engage in a, a slightly different way of working. We all got really used to using Zoom and Zoom is great but we really can't zoom like this forever. We got to keep building upon um, the skill, uh, building upon um, the idea of seeing each other in new ways. So it's a, it's a little program called uh, coaching for visual thinking. And, and I'd love for anybody listening to, to take me up on uh, trying it out. Awesome. Where can they go for more information on that? They, <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the best thing to do really um, is, is to find me on LinkedIn, um, first name, last name, in for slash Paul Sandbar. I'm always posting little things on there. I have a, a monthly drop-in visual reflection group for, for coaches and any, any people that want to think visually and see what it's like. Um, you'll, if, you, if you join or are asked to connect with me there, I'll be happy to to share more information or just follow me and you'll see a bunch of stuff because that's where I like to play and not to put too much on LinkedIn, but it's a, it's an enjoyable place, an enjoyable playground for me these days. So with Mural, is it, is it, does it do teleconferencing on top of the whiteboarding? <laughs> you know, interestingly, they, 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 they started to use that initially. They, they, they went and they were like, they're, we're going to, develop our own internal uh, video conferencing 
And then they said, you know what, let's go, let's focus on what we're good at. Yeah. And basically with my clients, I say, <clears throat> we join on, we join on zoom. I give them <clears throat> a visitor link. Mm -hmm. They click on it suddenly, you know, the, the zoom, uh, gallery or window is off to the side and then we're all and then we're looking at the the mural on on whatever you know whatever uh app or whatever program that they use you know chrome or, sure. or safari or whatnot but um so <clears throat> they do have some um auditory conferencing but mm -hmm. i think they just really like people to have their eyes on the on the whiteboard so that they are all looking together there. And yeah. so, but you know, all the other tools, I mean, this, you know, Zoom and, and, and Microsoft Teams, they have Mural incorporated into it now with an API app and oh, blah, 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 tech stuff. But um, yeah, you can, you can find it everywhere. Um, and it's just a fun place. You know, I use it just for myself. I have my, have a calendar on there. And I, I mean, it's, it's essentially uh, an infinite whiteboard that we can, drop yeah. links and, and anything into and, and play on. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So that's linkedin.com forward slash in I N forward slash Paul Sanbar. That it's P A U L S A N B A R. That's where that's you right. can, that's where you can find him and connect with Paul. Paul, is there anything else that we didn't touch upon? I want to be respectful of your time here. I know we're coming up on the hour. Uh, anything else you want to bring up that I glossed over, skipped over, missed? <laughs> no, you know, just to just to double down on on anybody Lincoln just listening just play is the way, right? Like think about think about what life was like when you were 9 and think about what life was is like now. When were you having more fun? Right? So whatever you're doing, go consider going into it with a playful um way of viewing it, your work, your work with others your the way the way you cook dinner it, it, it's just a for me it's a way of um it's a way of enjoying life that that is a little bit more fun so <laughs> play is the way friends <laughs> if it ain't light it ain't right <laughs> right 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 <laughs> uh paul thank you so much for joining us on the remarkable coach podcast thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining us as well um that'll do that'll do pig that'll do <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Cheers.